You are listening to Code Jump Radio, and it's time for Trigger Warning! Hello and welcome to the Trigger Warning Podcast. I'm Hayden Hewitt, and I'm joined, as ever, by Pickle himself, Mr. Graham Booth. <laughs> Hello. Are you, you all right? I'm all right. You sound all excited, Pickle. I am. I am. I'm full of full of beans. Very refreshed. <laughs> well, yeah, you've been asleep since about um, four o'clock, I believe. Yeah, something like that, yeah. And uh, it, thanks for letting everyone know, by the way. Well, I didn't let everyone know. I just put a poll to see what everyone thought, and uh, some people got it right. In case you're wondering where <laughs> we put the poll, um, on Trigger One, we've opened our own new little social media site, um, it's it's very much like every other social media site with a slightly different rule set. Um, if you want to join, it is invite only, but if you keep an eye on at Triggered TV on Twitter or check out our Facebook group or even the Trigger Warning forums, you will see invitation codes pop up where you can come and join us where we hang out and share pictures of our dinner yeah. and, um, you know, in certain groups, things that are far, far worse. Far, far worse. Um, but yeah, go and check for an invite code. Head over to social.triggerwarning.tv and join in. Mm. I think there's five codes available this evening, Graham. Five. Oh, is it? Oh, I got to, yeah. I keep meaning to grab one from my brother. I might just get one off you on the snide. And well, that would I'm be the, that would be the easiest way, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Just, you know, just yeah. mailing him and going, "Oh, is that one taken? Is that one taken? Is that one taken?" <laughs> right. Uh, do you know what I've noticed? That's interesting, and we put little batches out. People do start with the last one first. Ooh. And then work their way backwards. I think that's really cool. They all think they're so bloody clever, don't they? Eh? <laughs> Speaking of which, I've been sent um, a code for a multiplayer game. I've been sent Ooh. two codes for it. I, I know I know you've had a bit of a stress on recently, so I've not uh, bugged you, but I, you do want st- to. I do need to stream it at some point because that's part of the deal of doing the code, isn't it? But um, yeah, if you want to have a go with me, I don't yeah, know if it's in my. What, might... what is it? I, I don't. I can't even remember. You know, I just <laughs> oh, get sent. Great, you've sold I, it. <laughs> I, ju- I just get sent codes, and I was like, "Oh, okay." And it was like, "Oh, it's multiplayer." And I was like, "Well, can I, can I get two then?" I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna <laughs> make, make, make my mate buy it just so we can tell you it's shit. Well, I have, oh. I, as as you rightly point out, I've been a little um, <laughs> a little busy of late, but I'm sure I'll find time for a bit of gaming. Um, a little bit of games. That's it. You're on top of all the other stress that I don't want to go into on air because a lot of yes. family illness and problems. And But the, the day after I'd had that big fight with the social services of my mother-in-law, um, got a message from my son's teacher who'd spat in somebody's face. <gasps> now, I, went, I, went, I got very cross because he tried lying to me, which is not like him. But anyway, after a couple of hours of tears and grounding and, you know, taking away of privileges, it turns out what actually happened, and it's still wrong, but is that he blew a raspberry at the boy, and some spittle did indeed land on the boy's face. Well, that's not, well, that, it's that not changes the same, everything. Is it? No, that changes everything. no, no. So I've punished him double now, because I've told him, if you're going to spit in someone's face, do it properly. Get a, get a real... And do it right. I'm trying, to, ra- well, I'm trying yeah. to raise my son right, you know, and he, he lets me down <laughs> by being good and decent and polite. Yeah. He's, he's never going to get a rep for not being messed with if it was an accidental <laughs> spitting. And also, not just a raspberry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like- <laughs> I had a, oh, there was a, there was a big boy today at the group oh. I went to, a big boy, he was about eight or nine, he was, huge. <laughs> by by my current standards, um, I was like, "Oh, what's this?" And uh, yeah, he was he was he was throwing sand on people in disgraceful faces and that. And he, I, I saw him walking up to me giggling, and I thought, "Oh, I'm gonna have some fun with this." Did kind you spit threw... in his face? No, but I did. I, I, I grabbed his arm. I kept going. Oh. Is this the game? Is this the game we're playing? Are we? And I went. I, I, I marched into the sand, and he he got quite a bit on him. Um... I say so. I'm <laughs> so gonna be having to bail you out soon for real, aren't I? I'm gonna get no. a call. I'm gonna get a call from Graham's been arrested for abusing no, a not. child. Well, the thing is, no, he's he's not a little sexually. boy. Not not no, sexually. No, I'm no, not, no. It's physical abuse. Yeah, I'm not inferring. It's that kind of thing. Just you know, the actual, just physical 
laying well, your hands on other people's children. <laughs> he wanted a bit of a play and a bit of a tumble, and I give it to him. Yeah. God, that sounds awful, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm so, I'm so editing this out. No, I'm he so- didn't. You know, you know what I mean, though. He didn't need me to sit down and go like, yeah. "Right, son." Well, let's talk about this. Why are you feeling like... No, he's just a little boy dealing with his masculinity. So I, I, I think he enjoyed the fact that I fought back a little bit. <laughs> I, th- I, I, I think we must have had some new listeners in tonight. Cause I know his figures were actually quite good for a live show. And because we're talking about our kids and things, like a few people just go, oh, this this just isn't for me. <laughs> Fuck this shit. <laughs> uh, well, before we, before, we, before we get on to the actual news, I've got, I, I do have some more personal news oh. for you. Um, Because you've been rubbing it in a couple of times over the previous weeks. Listen to this. I've got Jaffa Cakes. That's awesome. And uh, I've been waiting to open them until we were on air. (laughs) Yes. Full pack. Uh, The other thing that happened was I bought two bottles of fabric softener today. And you've no idea how proud I was of myself. I had this, it was on offer, and I bought a lot. They were big bottles as well. I'm going to be set for weeks, mate. Weeks. (laughs) And uh, I'm proud of myself. I am really, really proud of myself. Uh, I won't be getting caught short. The third and last piece of news is that I've, that I've reverted today to, um, you know, when little kids go to the toilet and they pull the pants all the way down to their ankles. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, d- I did that today because, you know, I, I, I wanted to refresh my, my back region as I was there. And I was like, do you know what? This is really nice. Like I get a nice bit of air in all around <laughs> as I'm doing it. And I've I've just reverted fully now. I've crossed the line. Oh, I'm, I'm a, so not going to the pub with you. <laughs> I'm an ankle boy now. That's it. <laughs> oh, you're so going to end up having a couple of pints and then pissing inside your own pants. <laughs> <laughs> just filling them full of piss and pulling them up. And, oh. <laughs> mm. oh, that's going to be damp all the evening. But yeah, you should do that in public when you use public toilets, just all the way down. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck's sake hey man everyone Quick, hates oh so we never do football chat on this do we go on we never do football chat it was the third round of the caribou caribou carabao <laughs> whatever the milk cup tonight man city won 3-0 against oxford united with phil foden young phil foden getting his goal man united were beaten in penalties by derby county Oh, that is nice. That's, that's beautiful. That's the, that's the absolute limit of how much I follow football. I'm like, City won and United lost. Good, good, yeah. good, good. That's it. Oh, that's all I care about. Beautiful. So happy. So happy. Cheered me right up. Right up. And, uh, okay. Certainly, I've been looking forward to doing this. It's been such a, a fucking difficult bastard of a week. I know. I've been so looking forward to just doing something completely insular. You know, just away from everything else. Everything. Well, I have, I have thought I'd be on my own tonight. When I messaged you earlier, I thought <laughs> if he says no, I'll just go live for half hour, see what happens. I just, I, I had to because I did. I've seen too many hospitals and meetings, and it's it's been a never ending circle of nonsense. So, yeah, get back to doing some politics, some news, and some good stuff. And I think we should start off. Now that we've dealt with the personal stuff, we'll do all the shout-outs for everything else in the middle, I think. Mix it up a bit this week. Facebook has got some more problems. Oh, yeah, what have they done? Do you go, oh. Oh, poor Facebook. Uh, a former contract employee for Facebook alleges in a lawsuit filed on Friday that her time there as content manager and moderator left her with post-traumatic stress disorder. Triggered at times when she touches a computer mouse. What? <laughs> so, Selena Scholl has taken a job as a moderator on Facebook. Has found out that the internet has terrible, terrible things on it. And now every time, every time she touches a computer mouse, she has a flashback to some terrible image. Um, she claims that the tech giant failed to uphold its workplace safety standards for the moderation field. She said she developed a PTSD as a result of constant and unmitigated exposure to highly toxic and extremely disturbing images at the workplace. One of her lawyers said in a statement that the company is ignoring its duty to provide a safe workspace 
and instead creating a revolving door of contractors who were irreparably traumatized by what they witnessed. She took the job of a moderator on the world's biggest website. Did she really think she was going to be sitting there just happily clicking on pictures of puppies and birthdays and cakes? No, this is the stuff that gets reported. This, this is people this being disfigured, chopped to bits, vomiting, shagging, fisting, shitting, pissing. All the stuff that the internet contains flows through Facebook. Why wouldn't it? Why would it be everywhere else except... How can she not have known? And now she touches a mouse. And every time she touches a mouse, I don't know, an image of a dwarf pushing a broken bottle into someone's anus, whatever it is, flashes through her mind and she has PTSD, much akin to mm, a soldier returning from war. It's fucking incredible to me, this. That I is amazing. I, I could imagine being on Lively, can I moderate it? Well, I, I, I think some of these images are a bit strong. I'm wondering, does Facebook need to hire some moderators to moderate the pictures before they go to the moderators? That's what I was thinking. Yeah, what kind of roggins do you need for that job? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, that's, I was just thinking, I'll do that challenge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've seen worse. Jesus Christ. I've seen much worse. <laughs> <laughs> More. Faster. Faster. <laughs> I can't press approve quickly enough. <laughs> he's he's just getting through them at such a rate. <laughs> and he looks so happy <laughs> and slightly sweaty. <laughs> we we asked him to not smoke in the office, but he just, he just continuously he won't stop, man. And it's just the look on his eyes when you when you try and stop him. He keeps shouting woohoo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my loose slacks on today. <laughs> I'm wearing my white trousers. <laughs> <laughs> but um, a spokesman for Facebook has told Reuters in a statement that Facebook takes the, <laughs> takes the support of our content moderators incredibly seriously, ensuring that every person reviewing Facebook content is offered psychological support and wellness resources. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I'm thinking back to the what? days of Ogrish, dude. <laughs> Jesus. Maybe they just need to stop. Stop hiring exclusively far left snowflakes. Yeah, millennials. And that might solve your problem yeah, a little just, bit. Just stop because the NHS in Britain has got a real problem now because millennials don't want to work late. They don't want to work weekends. They don't want to be upset. They don't want to be puked on or pissed on. They've got a real problem. This is. I'm not just saying this as a gammon. This is an actual thing. It was a doctor that told me about this at the weekend. He was from India. He told me there's not enough English doctors, because obviously my little boy was there going, I want to be a doctor, and telling this guy all where the appendix was and everything, because he habitually watches Operation Ouch. But he said, there's a real problem. He said, you know, that's why guys like me are here, because there's not enough English doctors, and we can't even get the staff, not because of Brexit. Or English people, just like the millennials, like, her, oh, don't want to work late. Got to go home and get an Xbox Live while I eat some kale. Or whatever it is millennials do. I don't know. Complain at me on Twitter, mostly, I expect. Yeah. Dude, when I was training to be a wok chef, um, it was a couple of years training, you know? And uh, it was hard. It was hard work. I wouldn't go back to it, but we would never hire English people. Like, no, they, no. They'd, have to, they'd have to interview very, very well for that kind of graft. Um, that You know, they, occasionally we would, and they'd be crying, and, uh, yeah, it wouldn't work out. It's like, no, 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 no. Get, get some more Chinese in there, great. The graph like bastards. I'm trying to think back to the Ogrish days and did we offer psychological support to moderators? No, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I telling mean, you, man, they, it, it's because it's they're just. They don't hire conservatives. <coughs> they need to hire some conservatives. They, they, they're the ones making all the good memes. <laughs> they, they're gonna be they're gonna be able to take it of course Just they will hire some serbians or something that totally down with this shit it's no problem yeah. it's not, i can't even think on i know like for example on live that there's something sir mods might not want to look at so they'll pass it along or something they're not sure about i can't say i've ever in 12 years had one come to me go i'm so upset how could you allow me to look at these things 
Can you imagine my statement to Reuters? I'm not giving that pussy anything. Fucking loser. <laughs> <laughs> what a fucking loser. Duh, how did they operate? How did... All is the base that this person's got a sniff of the money, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what it always is. Of course. <laughs> uh, no, screw him though, screw him. I'm sorry, if you're a mod, you're a mod. No, you, a you take whatever shit comes through and it's always I bad. Mean, and all you get yeah. is abuse. You get abuse 24-7 and everything's your fault and that's just how it is. If, if, you, if you're thin-skinned, it's may, maybe not the gig for you because you're like... Online, we, we all perpetuate the myth that anyone that's a mod is on a power trip. I can think of no less thankless task on the internet than being the mod of anywhere sizable. Uh. It's thankless. It's, it's absolutely thankless. And you can't pay them what you should, because it's virtually impossible. So they do it because they love the place, you know, whichever site it is. And I've had a few sites with different mod teams and things, and... You know, to do that. But Facebook, no one's going to do it on Facebook because they love Facebook. You know, it's a job. But surely someone should have said before she sat down, you know, you might see some nasty things here. Because although we don't allow nipples on Facebook, you're going to see all the nipples we don't allow, along with all the beheadings we turn a bit of a blind eye to for a bit. <laughs> you know, and um, I just think it's absolutely stunning. I think it's absolutely stunning that she's going to sue them for actual money. Oh my word, we've had a link. This is from Anon Triggerist 7068 and it's technology related. And it's from the BBC, no less. Should Gammon slur be banned on Twitter? <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Anon Triggerist. This is beautiful. It's got a picture of a Gammon joint. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Twitter has asked its members to help shape new rules banning dehumanising speech in which people are compared to animals or objects. <laughs> For <laughs> fuck's sake. So does that mean you can't call someone a plank? I don't, yeah, I guess so, yeah, I guess so. It said language that made people seem less than human had repercussions. Oh my word. Oh, Twitter, don't. You were doing reasonably well all over there. Uh, for example, countless tweets describing middle-aged white men as gammon can be found on the platform. Isn't it? I can find so much worse than racial slurs on Twitter. I can find actively people actively calling for the death of other people. Oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah, entire yeah. groups of people. But I think we should ban gammon as a racial slur. Well, we already know that we're taking that back, aren't we, Pickle? Stop calling yeah. me Pickle. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> I... I I mean, <laughs> gammon and talked, pickle. <laughs> we, <laughs> we have we have is we have talked about gammon before, and it, mm. of course it's a slur. Of course it's a racial slur, but it's one of them where it's like, so. I, it, my only issue is it people denying that it is. It's like just own it. If you if you're gonna be a left wing bigot, then just own it. Just own it. Well, and just fucking get on with it. Apparently, it's an MP. Um, oh, these are some oh. of the people who have raised concerns. E, let, e Little Pengley. That's a double barreled surname. Little Pengley. <laughs> nice. <laughs> of course it is. She says, I'm appalled by the term gammon, now frequently entering the lexicon of so many, mainly on the left, and seemingly be accepted. This is a term based on skin colour and age. Stereotyping by colour or age is wrong, no matter what race, age, or community. It is just wrong. Adam Binkoff, who's got a blue tick, but I'm not sure who he is, I'm sure he doesn't know who I am either, says there is no cultural, economic or political disadvantage to being an angry old man with pink cheeks. Relax, nobody's coming for you. Now, as you know, I embrace the term gammon deeply. But hearing an answer like that... <laughs> if I said that to... Let's say an Asian person, you know, when someone says they can't fucking drive or something like that, and that sticks. Yeah. There's actually no disadvantage to Asian people. You can see that statistically. Okay? Statistically, jobs-wise, employment-wise, opportunities, there's no disadvantage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. imagine if I took a racial slur against them, and I said, there's no cultural, economic, or political disadvantage to being called, I don't know, what, insert your favourite 
choice. Relax. Nobody's coming for you. I would be... Oh, they'd be after me, wouldn't they? Yeah, of course, of course. I, I, you I, can't I, be I, racist I, against white people. Those are the I rules. Just, oh, fuck off. That's ridiculous. I, I'm, a, I'm, a bit conf- I'm a bit concerned here. There's no writer attached to this story. Mm. Um, and I'm wondering if, secretly, whoever wrote this is a fan of the show. Because, <laughs> because the quote that they've got off Twitter... Is from a Neil Pickles. <laughs> and a Mr. Pickles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, he's a senior <laughs> policy strategist for Twitter. Yeah, but why have they gone to Mr. No, why have they gone to Mr. Pickles? If only they'd had a <laughs> quote from Dave Gammon. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm just a bit like, is, is this, like, is, is whoever wrote this, have they, have they thought, I know, I know Aiden and Graham are going to come across <laughs> this at some point. <laughs> that does look like a nice piece of Gammon, though. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking should it be? But comparing people to animals or inanimate objects should be banned. Why? Well, it's, it's, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> you, 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 what, you call someone a grass? That's, a pig. You know, yeah. I mean, I like pig because it's also body shaming and people get really fat. Especially, especially if you call a lesbian feminist one, they go through the fucking roof. Yeah. <laughs> I called one a fat pig once, never heard the fucking end of it. I don't even know what she looked like. I just chose it to see what happened. Turns out it works very, very well. Um, right up there with the suggesting they have a shave. Um, you know, but uh, yeah, uh, it's just uh, the world's gone fucking mental. It's gone mental. We know the internet's changing. We know there's things you've got to do and there's pressures, but I, I think platforms should resist those pressures as long as it's viable for them to do so and i know that something the size of twitter can resist a hell of a lot more than the rest of us if they chose to you know if someone came to me and said uh, we'd like your if if, if let's say live leap was just mine okay yeah well obviously it would have shut down about 10 years ago it would have, <laughs> <laughs> it would have been illegal and shut down if it was just mine Wait, if it's just been the same, right, I, I suggest that you stop uh, anyone calling anyone after an inanimate object. I, I, I don't know if I could have entertained that conversation. I certainly wouldn't have put it out to live leakers. What do you think, guys? <laughs> 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 it's bad enough the rules we have got, but the other yeah. Do you think we should stop this dehumanizing language? <laughs> it, what? Yeah, it, 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 it's one of those tropes that gets thrown out, mm-hmm. doesn't it? At a convenient moment, isn't it? It's like, um, if you're going to support some sort of ideological argument and you don't actually have meat to it, you just, oh, well, dehumanizing language, it's normalizing this, it's doing this, it's like, fuck off, fuck off. <laughs> hey, you reminded me, actually, with the, the pig comment. Mm. Did you see uh, the Cosmopolitan cover and all the fuss that's been get coming over that? Oh, was it with that big fat pig on it? <laughs> yeah, Tess, Tess, Tess Holiday. Like, huge. Oh, 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 she's never seen a pie she didn't like, has she? <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh. I tell you, the weather could be cold as a well as a well digger's belt buckle. She'll be sweating in many places. But anyway, I digress. No, no, well, I just, I just, to be honest, that was it. I just, I knew you'd be horrible about it. I thought I'm going to bring that up. <laughs> I did, I did see the magazine cover when I was out shopping. Yeah, me and, too. And me it's, too. It's, it's at the counter there. And I looked in, I thought, oh dear. <laughs> yeah. It's almost like they've gone, have you ever heard of this Hayden bloke? Let's make a cover for him. Just so I can say, yeah. what the fuck? But I know it's like the independent, isn't it? Any story about relationships, they have to have two blokes kissing. No matter what. And I'm not offended by two men kissing, but I, I just reach a point where we're going, what are you fucking doing? Now, I'm not offended by fat people. People are free to be as fat as they like. But when you're putting them on the cover of Cosmopolitan, what you're really saying, it's not we want to empower these people. Out. It's like, look at this fat person. <laughs> look at her. Look at the size of her. Look at the cankles. Mm. Look at her gunt. You know, bingo wings. That's what they're saying. They're saying, look at her, look at her, and then we dare you to say anything because you'll be a terrible person. And then she's probably that, I imagine, I'm very happy that I'm still perfectly healthy. I hear that. 
You know, I, I'm I'm fat. If someone calls me fat, I'm not offended. It's just a fucking fact. You can't be offended by facts. Okay? It's a fact. You're fat. Yes, I am. Well, it's disgusting. Yes. Any further points you've got to make? She's probably there going, I'm perfectly healthy like this. And the fact is, you know, you're a ticking diabetes time bomb. Yeah. Um, it's interesting, actually. Uh, well, well, that's the thing. That's the problem. It's the fact that, I mean, obviously, a few years ago, we did have an issue. And it, I, I do think it is a dangerous thing to put, like, insanely skinny women on covers. Oh, I of agree. Things. You, you know, I agree you know when, completely. When they're so bad, the periods have stopped and they, mm. they can't process food properly and stuff. And it's like, come on, size zero. But fuck off. if one of those people, you know, the walking skeletons. Yeah. If they had, I nearly said Auschwitz chic, then that'd be so wrong, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, don't say that. If if one of them said, I'm perfectly healthy like this, whilst, you know, clattering across the floor, like Zelda, like it was it was Zelda in Pet Cemetery, wasn't it? I'm not making that name up. I think she was called Zelda the sister. Um, You know, the, the, the really fucked up one. Clattering across the floor at you like that with a corpse face, I'm perfectly fine. You know, no teeth left because all the stomach acids, you know. You say, mm-hmm. no, you're not. And anyone that said, no, she's perfectly fine, you say, you're an inhuman fucking monster. This girl's ill. Yeah. This girl's ill. She's got a mental problem. And, you know, if someone's overweight, they're not ill. They just eat a bit much. If someone weighs the same as a family fucking car, do you know what? They're ill. We shouldn't be celebrating them. We should be saying, maybe, you know what? Ease up on the cream cakes, love. You're going to have yeah. an heart attack. You're 30 years old. You look like you've been overinflated with a fucking bike pump. Some it's going to give. I think the, the, the problem is people people conflate like that sentiment with uh, giving permission to just bully, you know, like really harass them. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, well, if you're saying that, you obviously mean harass them, scream at them in the street and stuff. It's like, no, it's not the same thing. You could, you can. You, that is did, perfectly acceptable. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of bullying, but um, it's not bullying. It's just having a laugh. Well, yeah, that's the thing. It? <laughs> it's just the lulls. Where's the harm? These, these lines, these lines move bits a bit. Unfortunately, though, you're going to put yourself on the front cover of Cosmopolitan. Then you're up for debate at that point. I'm you're emailing just, them. I want to be on the next one. Oh God, that would be so sexy. Um, <laughs> just in my but, pants. Yeah, but yeah, dude, get, get going on going on about it being healthy is that's a lot of people have stepped up now though. They're like, look, okay, we're all about body positivity, but don't be fucking ridiculous. I um, hate, do you know what phrase I hate? Body shaming. Yeah. How dare you body shame me? Well, it's not hard. You're fat and you've got a hair lip. I can't help it. Yeah, it's the thing though. It's, it's, it's this the is, thing. This is life. Lose weight. Wear a mask. Um, in terms of women. More cancers are going to be caused by obesity than smoking very soon. It's yeah, which is up. stupid. Which is um, stupid because there's a lot of pleasure to be had by getting one from smoking. <laughs> <laughs> but every, every, everyone you meet, though, and it's true, it's that old trope, isn't it? But it is true. I've got a disorder. I've got a gland. I've got a gland. You know, it's not my fault. It is. There's nothing I can do to lose weight. There is. Stop fucking eating. It's like anorexics. You know, there's nothing I can do. There is. Start fucking eating. I know you've got a mental problem, so let's get you on some pills and get you fed up. But, you know, when someone's grossly obese, there's a problem. There's the same mental problem as anorexia. And if someone weighs as much as that lady on the Cosmopolitan, who I'm sure is a lovely lady, and I wish her nothing but happiness and a long life, whatever... But someone should say, you're, you're not well. You know, you've not just got a bit of a gut. Yeah, we can't see where your stomach stops and your ankles start. You yeah. know, because you're only one short hop, skip and a jump away from needing to be get the fire brigade out to get you out of fucking bed. And I'm not even being just horrible for the sake of it. They need support, not putting on the front of Cosmopolitan. You know, that's not helping anybody. Oh, body positivity. Don't be positive about illness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, it's, it's like Don't be negative, people. but be re- be realistic, okay? Yeah. Let's be realistic. It's like it's like when religious people get hurt and they try and pray it away. Um, <laughs> I, know, I know someone got stung by a scorpion in Italy and they just prayed. Uh, I think they were all right. I assume they were. I don't know. I did, you probably would be like, by a scorpion, but try that with a fucking rattlesnake. Yeah, but you, 
You might want to go get it checked, though. You know what I mean? You have someone look at it at least. Have a pray, but get some tablets. <laughs> yeah. It's like when people tell me about, you know, like the, the, the anti-vaxxer type people about, you know, don't get chemotherapy, you know, take bicarbonate of soda. It's like, all right, guys, I'll tell you what, have a bit of weed, have some bicarbonate of soda, soda rather, get a bit of chemotherapy as well. Yeah. Because someone straight face told me, but we all know that's what actually kills you. No, no, I, I'm pretty sure it's the cancer. I'm pretty sure it's not the chemotherapy that kills most. Well, most people is. No, I'm pretty sure that's a fucking lie as well. Most is a very big word. Look, I'm sure chemo can be very bad for you, and I'm sure it can kill you. But if if the chemo does kill you, you're already at a point where, (laughs) you you know, know, if they don't do it lightly, (laughs) um, you're already at a point where blasting you like that and completely zapping your whole body fucking chemicals and shit it's, it's the, the only, only way they can option. keep you alive yeah yeah and i yeah. met a lot of people going i wouldn't have it and i'm like it's an easy thing to say but i imagine when the doctor goes look you know you, you got like a couple of weeks to live but if we give you chemo we can give you another six months mm. yeah yeah i'll have it i'll have every minute you can give me thank you i'll try any whatever oh you'll be throwing up i don't care i'll be with my family i'll take it i'll do it yeah i'll do it i don't give a fuck yeah, load me up <laughs> Turn me into the fucking Hulk. Just load me the fuck up. I'm not looking forward to any of that, Aiden. Who is, though? It's not going to be the best of times, is it? (laughs) Oh, I can't wait. (laughs) Hey? I can't Um, wait to be stood in tears outside Christie's. Yeah, fucking great. I'll really really appreciate life at that point, (laughs) finally. (laughs) You'll regret the life you've lived, the life of racial hatred and ableism. Tell you yeah, that. Keep, oh, for fuck's sake. Fucking, as soon as you open that social media, <laughs> uh, social dot trigger warning, by the way, if anyone wants to go on it, but um, straight away, like racial comments about me, straight away. It's Some you. of them, like, I didn't even see, I wasn't even friends with them when they made the comment. <laughs> People just know, dude. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Mostly because I've told them. Hey, do you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what we introduced uh, that interview on Sunday with mm. Shan Sung? Uh, that was really, really interesting because he was he was born in 1950, and obviously Japanese heritage growing up in America at that period of time was very, very difficult. All the camps and all that, and uh, it was dead, dead interesting hearing his perspective on growing up in a country that was very definitely racist towards Japanese people or xenophobic, mm. and then playing movie roles where you're ex because the guy the guy just talks like someone from california but he but in all of his roles he's like your soul is mine yes you know, and all of that. course of um, course. it's a really really interesting perspective actually i uh, can't wait to hear it I, i'm so sorry i couldn't listen to it on that but as you know i was somewhere else it's all right uh, where i couldn't listen to radio but um i really wanted to hear that so i will as soon as you know you give me a nudge when the podcast's up yeah, I might, I might, uh, I'll probably put a link to it in the description for this actually as well. Yeah, and then That'd people, be a good if anyone idea. wants to find Get it, it out there. Get it out. <laughs> I'd like, but, uh, I, I'm looking forward to hearing that. I, I, I do have to thank people for not, whilst we were going, because we went deep and dark. I mean, this guy's, he's, he's obviously got some dementia or something, there's something going on. Um, and we were getting deep and dark, and I've really got to thank all the people tweeting in for not calling me a racist, because it would have been like one in joke too far. <laughs> What's he got? Dementia, was that, Graham? Dementia. Yeah, I was going to die. Dement- is that like a different kind of thing, is that? Oh, shut up. Does he take up. up too much space? <laughs> That's know, what that bird's it. got. That's what that bird's got on the front of Cosmopolitan. She's got dementia. <laughs> a bit of dementia. <laughs> he got a bit too much dimension there, love. <laughs> I've got to remember that one now. Hashtag dementia. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that has tickled me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 perfect timing as well. I just go on the chat and Happy Dog's giving it. Graham likes it when periods haven't started yet. He did have a, a comment about your new friend. Uh, he said, uh, Happy Dog in, in the Trigger Warning chat, which is triggerwarning.tv slash live. While we record this live, you can go in there, have a chat with other triggerists and uh, yeah, listen live. Uh, he says, will Graham be wearing his little tight shorts when he does his Skype sex with his new oriental sugar daddy? <laughs> oh, he's going to teach me to breathe, isn't he? 
And <laughs> <laughs> you, oh, do you know who you need to interview next? Go on. You know the one that's been in every film, wherever they need a Chinese man with long hair? Okay. Now they've got the guy from The Raid. But it used to be this, I wish I could remember his name, he was in Die Hard, Big Trouble in Little China, loads of all these. He's got long hair, a moustache, because every man should have a moustache. And he's he's Oriental anyway. Mm. Uh, but he's been in loads of genre films. I know I know game faces about computer games, but fuck it, man. Div- you know, the, the diversity, it's, it's growth, it's what makes us stronger. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, yeah. But you need to, and you need to exclusively interview Oriental people. Asian yeah, people. yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> what are you doing these days, Graham? I interview just like Asian dudes on, on, my, on my gaming show. <laughs> I'm hoping no one notices. What do you mean to do with games? No, I'm not fussed. Just, you know. <laughs> Last week it was Alan Poe Fungo as a chippy in East Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing when we get on the ones with the really poor pigeon English. <laughs> and they're going, How are you? You okay? Do my dad's trick where you shout louder and try and sound a bit foreign. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? How are you? It's like, Dad, stop. That's that's not their language. But he's got him through eight years, who am I to say anything, you know, but I love yeah. it. My dad, my dad just adopts a, a slightly, really insulting version of their accent and just leaves right. out a few words and shouts louder. <laughs> and the, the, the universal manner of communication. Yeah, we, even even does it around Scottish people, to be fair. Well, so, that can be difficult, man. I don't remember not for my the dad. Glaswede. Not when the Glaswegians dad. took over, uh, I couldn't understand the fucking word any of them were saying. Oh, well, my dad doesn't have that problem. He doesn't listen. <laughs> he just is, <laughs> yes, he, he's already made up, made up his mind. What are you going to say? Well, he's, he's deaf now. He's going deaf and he's got hearing aids, but he won't wear them. Right. And every week, right, I make him sound like an infirm old man. He's not. He, he really isn't. Um, but every week we have an argument because of something he thinks I might have said. Not anything I've said, or necessarily anything I was even thinking about. Just something he thinks that might have been the words that came out of my mouth. There'll be an argument. But, 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 but why? There's such a wealth of actual things you've said to choose from. <laughs> Not to my parents, dude. I don't even swear in front of my parents. No. Does he, go, does he know about your Twitter and all that, though? Oh, he doesn't have much to do. They kept trying to follow me on Facebook, and they're quite offended I won't let them. <laughs> But I'm like, you see me every week, and I talk to you several times a week. You know, there's, there's no. Well, we we want pictures of you know Junior. It's like, I send them to you. There's not one picture gone up anywhere that, that you don't have. No one's getting any. You are, and I I don't need to for just them to follow the wrong Twitter account or something. Click like, and then cop for some of my <clears throat> followers. That's. Can you imagine that on my eight-year-old mother? No, I yeah. know. Oh. They start, you'll you'll know when they start asking you about the racist you've been hanging out with, <laughs> Graham. Oh no, my dad really likes you. Yeah, because he, he met now, you. He, he thought you were a lovely. No, that wouldn't change his mind. <laughs> he hasn't seen, the, he hasn't seen the, smear, the smear campaign. He doesn't realise that you orchestrated it. <laughs> that wouldn't matter. Um, but now he thinks you're you're a very 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 friendly and charming young man. Which just That's goes right. to show how easily tricked he is and what a terrible judge of character. Because <laughs> you're basically a war criminal that's just not had a war yet. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm just waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting for that draft because they, they'd never let me in legitimately. <laughs> I'd never pass the psychological evaluation. But I, he really wants to do this, like, too much. How did we get on to how deaf my father is? I don't know. Hey, but you know, you just reminded me then when you said about photos at my birthday mm. recently, and my mum sent down pretty much every uh, baby and child photo of me that's in existence in a little book, Aww. and I thought I thought they were lost forever. Has she got them digital? No, no. Oh, no I was I was going to drop her a message. Just send them to <laughs> me. I'll I'm just going to store them for him. Keep them safe. <laughs> I'll show. I tell you what I'll do. I'll, 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 I'll give you a couple to put on the Patreon. <laughs> a couple of my long-haired, phased ones, and all that. No, I mean I've always had long hair, but you know, there's that bit where you're a teenager where you're going through your long hair phase. It's just like it just looks awkward. <laughs> yeah, we'll Patreon only. 
Oh, bless. An on trigger 7068 said, I went to Gran Canaria. The locals called me chicken skin. Oh, really? <laughs> In Thailand, they call me horse. Hey, you horse! Should, you should have said, don't you speak to me, you third world <laughs> shithole scum. I mean, in Gran Canaria. Yeah. I don't know what they are there. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> Something. Something different. Some kind of terrible <laughs> foreigners that we're trying to get away from. Uh, before, before we move on to breaks, actually, what well, a lovely segue. Uh, I've got to say, if you do enjoy Trigger Warning, and we hope, we hope you do, and you'd like more of it and more greatness and stuff and things, um, please consider supporting the project. You can go to patreon.com slash trigger warning TV. Um, you can donate anything, a dollar a month or more, whatever's comfortable for you. And uh, you can see what targets we're trying to achieve and what we're going to do with the money. We're not just going to spend it on, I'm not going to say coke and hook, as everyone knows. I'm way too old for that shit. And, you know, you, you just, you know, pick up hitchhikers. But um, you can see it all on there. Or if you just want to drop a couple of Bob, and you can't be bothered with the rest, just we've got a PayPal link on the main page. And if you can't afford anything, because times are tough, okay, there's no getting around it. If you just share our links, you know, let people know about it, that would be awesome. Sign up for the social sign, do it, you know, just be a part of it. Be a part of it and come and hang out with us when we're not doing shows, because uh, we're even cooler then, and you get to see what a shocking racist Graham actually is. Oh, God, you know. <laughs> So just Speaking to, of social, I've just had a follow from someone called Ball Crusher. Oh. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that's one of ours. <laughs> I, I, why has somebody else signed up? <laughs> oh, no, this is on Twitter. But I check oh. that they're the following seven people and it's gear press. <laughs> cogent. Oh, oh, bad noises. I'll be right back. Yeah, you go and deal with that. Um, Graham's obviously got a bit of a, an issue that I, I imagine his, uh, his youngster's woken up, so he'll be going to deal with a... He says he's been followed by Ball Crush. I've never been followed by anyone called Ball Crush. I don't think this has got anything whatsoever to do with trigger warning. Uh, but we are talking about the man with a barely legal Instagram uh, curation habit, so could be anything, really. Um, by the way, did you guys see Donald oh Trump's... <laughs> Dude, Did you... I had I had all that in my ear, right? <laughs> I don't care. As I was as I was explaining, there's no monsters <laughs> <laughs> apart from the one in my headphones right now. <laughs> Just barely illegal Instagram. <laughs> like... There are no monsters apart from your daddy. <laughs> your daddy's a terrible monster, terrible man. Did you see Donald Trump's speech at the United Nations? Uh, no, I didn't. I, well, I saw oh, snaps of it. Beautiful. They all started laughing at him. Yeah, that's the bit I saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he said he's done more. <laughs> and I thought, guys, guys, come on. And it's like the President of the United Sp States stood up to speak at the UN. And everyone's laughing. Deservedly. You know, usually I'd be horrified, but the guy's just lying, and he's talking to them as if it's a Trump rally. Yeah, that's the issue, whereas, isn't it? Whereas nothing's improved, nothing's higher, you know, the, except the debt. There's no getting away from it, it's just a fact, guys, I'm not, I'm not being pro-anti here, it's just a fact, go and look it up, you know, nothing's... You know, job increases were higher under Obama, and they've dipped now, it just... I'm not saying who's someone's better or worse. These are just facts. And remember, you can't get butt hurt about facts. Facts are facts. Calling it fake news doesn't make it not real. These are out there. It's a matter of record. He's not really achieved a great deal yet. For whatever reason, I'm sure it's all the Democrats' fault, even though they control the House and the Senate. Um, and the whole of the United Nations just started laughing at him. And it was, you know, when your ass puckers up really tight. Yeah, yeah. It was one of those, like, oh. And when he said, well, that wasn't the response I was expecting. <laughs> Bless him. Yeah. It, is, it is kind of shameful how, I mean, obviously they got the tax cut through, which is a big Republican thing they've been pushing for years and years. But <laughs> And it's pushed um, the debt up. Um, and none yeah, of it's trickled down to anybody. But um, it, it is kind of odd, like, you know, for... for the, the Republicans haven't had this much power for a generation. You know, this complete in terms of the vote and everything. They're so they're doing so well, and yet where's where's the big, you know, like all all the things that they, <laughs> how can I put it? All, you know, when someone's not in power and it's like, oh, if only you'd let us have a chance, we we'd sort it out. And it's like, well, come on then, 
This is your chance now. This is it. You've got you own all three uh, wings of the legislature. You're good. Go for it, guys. And yet, you, well, not a lot really. It's it's you know. D- thankfully, he, he's been sort of quite for all the rhetoric. He's been quite a a slow moving president, really. It's almost as if his own party don't fully support him, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but we've seen what we've seen what happened with Labour, though. I mean, look, Labour just Labour have pulled themselves apart with this exact oh. same thinking and Corbyn, and it's and ultimately it's like, guys, guys, you 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 you're in power for the American people. Why don't you get some shit sorted out whilst you're there? Yeah. Why don't you do some stuff from while you're there? Go on, make it better. Do something good for the American people. Um, but politics doesn't work like that now. I mean, look at the the, the disgusting mess we have got in the UK now. Whether people believe people misdirected or whatever, people voted in that referendum to leave the EU. The majority of voters voted leave. And I'll tell you this as well before we move on from that. Hmm. I, and I hate to say this, I really hate to say this, but Jacob Rees Mogg made a very, very good point the other day. And it, well, yeah. my ass is crawling. But he you said, can't, you can't, you can't. The, See, that's the problem. You're being realistic. Even the most hateful people get shit right. But but he's yeah yeah of course he does and and he said look there hasn't been one vote on this there's been three votes 2015 the conservatives were voted in with the policy of bringing in the referendum then there was the referendum and there's been another election since then that both the parties said we're going to respect it so there's been mm. three votes there's been three nationwide votes with uh, leaving Europe being a huge yeah. topic no, you're a, 100% a right and not time. only that. When all the Remainers say, uh, yeah, it was just an advisory referendum. No, but Yeah, that's lovely. But they did say at the time, very clearly, that whatever the people decide, this is what will happen. They were very clear, very concise. And, you know, the, the, the referendum was called by a Remainer, Cameron. Brexit is being handled d- dreadfully by a Remainer, May. George Osborne was a Remainer. The, the two most powerful men in British politics were Remainers. You know, so it's not been as unfair as you say, but the fact is we voted to leave, okay? Once or three times, whatever it is, we voted to leave the EU. And now we, we knew we'd got an inept government. It was always going to be a shit show, no doubt. But we're being pulled apart now. Is that two of my cats fighting? <laughs> I do believe it is. Um, we're being pulled to pieces by Remainers who will who will take any deal now. Even the worst kind of dreadful Norway quizzling servile deal. We've got a Labour Party and Jeremy Corbyn detests the EU. Always has. That is a fact. It's just a fact of record. He does. He really does. But Labour are tearing themselves out because you've got Keir Stamer saying no, no, we should keep a uh, another referendum on the table as to whether we should remain and yet all of Labour's policies that they think are vote winners such as renationalisation um, contracts being tendered to British companies first cannot happen within the EU can't happen because that's illegal in the EU to say we're going to give British jobs you know, contracts to British companies first you're not allowed to do that that's why all our railways and everything else are owned by France and Germany and shit so, uh, Labour are being torn apart, so they can't even be effective in opposition to the Tories. The Tories, uh, they're, they're a dreadful party of dreadful, dreadful people. <laughs> and now they're inept as well. At least they were never inept. When they settled down to really fuck the country, they used to be very good at it. Oh, yeah. Um, but they're inept. They're just, they're just ruinous, you know? And there's no balance anymore. There's nothing. There's just this milky toast desperation to hold on for another couple of years. You know, and we wonder why China is succeeding, because they have 10-year, 20-year, 50-year, 200-year plans, their government. I've got a friend of mine that uh, oversees a lot of government contract works, you know, and relations between the countries, and they've got it planned out long after they're dead and gone. Granted, they don't have to worry about their party being voted out <laughs> in the elections. Yeah, I know. Um, um, but regardless, they've got a plan. And that's for the be- the greater good of China, 
So each party would have rat- would ratify the plan anyway, because that's the best thing for the country. We don't have that. We we just have what's the best thing to get us more support. And I was seriously worrying today because I I still don't think we're going to get a Brexit. And right now the only deal is no deal because the Chequers plan's ridiculous. It's yeah, a joke. Yeah. Um, the only deal now is no deal. That's the only deal. And it's short term, it's going to be bumpy, but do you know what? Europe will lose more money. Yeah. I, do, do you know what, though? I get, I get, I'm getting really frustrated about the lack of, uh, the, the misinformation on no deal, because it seems to be the likes of the BBC, the Independent and all that at the moment. They're just, they're, every couple of days they pick something new. So mm. right now it's planes. They're like, planes won't be able to take off. <laughs> they, won't have, they won't necessarily have permission. It's like, hold the fuck up. World Trade Organization, the rules say that until there's a rule in place, you the assumption is that you stay by the old rules. Yes. So n- new new deal doesn't necessarily. I mean, no deal doesn't necessarily mean every single thing that's in place right now will be instantly scrapped. Mm. Actual WTO. The 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 whole point of that is that it's like no no no. If there's an agreement in place, that's what stays until there's because, a new rule. Yeah, because the whole point of the WTO is to, to stop absolute economic collapse you know like it's, yeah. it's but but at the moment we're going well what if the planes can't take off what are you going to do then eh? yeah, well, I, I, I was widely ridiculed not that long ago for saying the best thing we can do is just go out on wto and everyone oh but it'll be this but that. it's the best thing we can do it's the best thing and everyone widely ridiculed me but you know what i still firmly believe it's the only option we have we either stay in or we crash out. I, I, yeah, I mean, I. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. When you say best thing, obviously there's going to be economic hurt. Obviously there is. But, 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 there is know, anyway. But Europe's but, but teetering on the edge of another. Yeah. Um, recession anyway. So what's what's yeah. what's the difference going to be? But 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 here's the thing. Here's the thing. At this point, we we. It, we need to be as much in control of our own interests as possible, don't Absolutely. we? Absolutely. That's and why some, we need to crash out. Crash yeah, out of the EU violently. We need to crash out. We need Boris in that Union Jack <laughs> body paint on the White Cliffs of Dover saying, wop, wop, wop. And the French yeah. are now ridiculing us, quite rightly so, because we haven't got anyone strong. Oh, you idiots, think you can have anything? France didn't want us in in the first place because they knew we'd get everything that we got. No, they didn't, by the way. That's just not me saying it because I'm xenophobic. They didn't. They. They were the ones that got us refused to enter the, mm, uh, no, the remember, EEC. Yeah, yeah. They can't wait to get us out. But what everyone's being foolish is French industry and German industry are really ringing the alarm bells now. Because they're going, you're making it sound like only Britain can lose. Europe stands to lose over 100 billion more, roughly across three countries, to be honest. In the event of us crashing out... This is yeah. pain for everyone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but Remainers are acting thing. as if only we're being unreasonable. The fact is we do want a divorce from the EU. And if the EU cannot compromise because it's not within their, their, their rules or whatever, and they just cannot, don't, don't take the piss, just no. And then we should yeah. have politicians strong enough to go, right, this is what's happening. When we crash out, this is going to be the situation. This is what we can do. This is what we've been lacking. And then turn around to, instead of going over there to the EU like Theresa May and acting all like, oh my God, they were so nasty to me, stood up, pants down, fuck the lawyer. Yeah. That's what uh, we should that, have. I'll that, fucking, that, I can see your house from here, dickhead. That speech she did the other day, I was so excited when she started. <laughs> Because she's, you know, she was talking about respect and all that. And then it just sort of flitted off at the end. And I was like, oh, for God's no, sake. She actually did quite well for a while. And it pains me to say that. But for a while, she sounded almost like a prime minister, apart from the quavering voice. Yeah. she That was that was the closest she's had to having a pair of balls since she started. It was like, and, and I was just waiting for her to just say, at this point in time, we are no deal. We are a strong country. We'll deal with it. And, and you know what? Ultimately... Right, here's the thing. Businesses, they they might want one thing one way or the other, but ultimately what they really want is to just know what's fucking going on so they can plan for it. Yeah. That's, that's what they want. They want. Right, this is what we're going to have. What are we going to... But at the moment, it's like, um, 
it's just all this posturing and all this and and come on when when they came up with the checkers i you can check my twitter timeline i i straight away i replied to the conservatives i was like good luck getting that past the eu because there's no fucking way they were going to touch um free trade with no free movement they've said that from the fucking start And this, um, this whole island business is getting at ridiculous as well because... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you'll need the border in the middle of the sea. Yeah. And so, of course, the Remainers, even though they're English or wherever, are going, yeah, well, it's time to give Ireland back to the Irish. Do you know what? I'd agree, except the people who live in Northern Ireland might not. Yes. it's. Do it's, they not have... A, it's like when they say we should give the Falkland Islands back to Argentina. Well, oh, the Falkland Islanders don't think so. No, if the, no, if the no, day no, no. came that they had a vote and said, we want to go back to Argentina, I'd be like, okay, well, fair fucks. Do you know what, though? Even people that I know who are on the far left, um, who are like, you know, oh, Palestine, all that stuff and everything. When I've asked them about the Falklands, every single one of them, I've never met anyone that's because I'm like, well, you know, that little island down there with all the oil, <laughs> they're like, yeah, we should probably keep that, shouldn't we? Even they're <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll keep the oil island. <laughs> 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 oh that might come in handy see there's a streak of colonialism in all of us <laughs> if you dig deep enough <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, yeah. <laughs> remainers you know it's funny I, I get because obviously i'm called a complete moron all of the time for voting leave because they've decided all my reasons for me but i think remainers for everything they're saying right now how things are they're being far more damaging to our country than leaving the EU because what we've got now is an existential crisis. We're committed to leaving the EU, apparently. They're pinning their hopes on Labour somehow getting their shit together with the anti-Semite leader to become the dominant political force for this country. Um, and they're powering the division a lot more. I see so much more virulent hate coming from Remain now. And Jenny, you know, cause I, I read all of it. I'm no more in the camp of the I hate them brown people that comes from abroad and takes our jobs people than I'm the Remainers. But I'm seeing far more noise from the FBPE people. And aren't they fannies? Aren't they miserable, whiny fannies? Yeah. Well, they, they, I, I've, I'm seeing it a lot at the moment where they're like, oh, we need a pe- hashtag people's vote <laughs> and, and, and all that shit. And it's like, but, but, and what they want is at the moment, what they want Labour to push for is a vote between, you know, a second referendum, but it's no deal, checkers, <laughs> or we stay, in, we stay in Europe. But that's such a blatant political move to split the leave vote. Yeah, and not only you know, that, like, it's, it's just scandalous, the whole thing. But, dude, we're coming up to the end of this podcast. We've oh, got, we've got to stop on the hour, but the good news is, if you're listening live, we will return after a short play, bre- break, break, where we'll record um, trigger warning extra time, so you can stay with us for that. If you're listening via podcast, please do click on the next file. Um, the podcast is recorded live every Tuesday night at 10.30 p.m. Uh, via triggerwarning.tv slash live or Cogent Radio. And it's released on a Wednesday with extra time being released on the Friday, giving you days and days of wonderful, wonderful trigger warning content. Oh, it's delicious. There's so much of it. But thank you very much for listening. And as I say, if you're listening live, do hang on in there because we will be back very, very soon. And if you'd like to help support us, remember to go to patreon.com slash trigger warning TV or head over to gearpress.co.uk and buy some trigger warning merchandise, T-shirts, mugs, shit like that. Keeps the lights on, keeps the lights on, guys, and helps us make more of this high-quality content you just don't get on the BBC. Mmm. So that puts us at 30 (laughs) seconds. A big big sigh after that, just to really hammer the point of... uh, (laughs) uh, uh, So I guess all that's left now, Graham, is to say uh, night-night. (laughs) Night-night! Good night, everybody. I'll see you in a minute.